Um, my name is Catherine Constantinu Shurelu. I'm a Google Summer of Code student. And I'm working on the project entitled uh, Enabling Free Multimedia Real-Time Communication in Debian, RTC. Um, for uh, the beginning of my talk, I'll uh, give a short overview of WebRTC, how it works, how, how it is managed. And uh, after that, a short demonstration of the project I'm currently, currently working on, the Recon server. It's a SIP conferencing uh, server, and uh, possibly a replacement for uh, Mumble, uh, which we know had some problems in the last iteration of Debian. Okay, so what is WebRTC? Does anyone know? Okay. Uh, so for those who don't know, basically it's an API that uh, enables plugin-free uh, communication. Basically, we have one platform for uh, real-time communication. It's unifying, actually. Uh, WebRTC has many components, uh, such as uh, codecs, uh, and, the, and the API for uh, I mean, for example, signal, it doesn't have signaling. The user has to provide his own solution, but the framework, is, the framework provides a, a possibility to integrate it, such as you, you can have a SIP, uh, you can use SIP for signaling, you can use uh, XMPP Jabber or something else. So it pro provides the, all the framework for uh, real-time communication. This is a possible infrastructure. Uh, as you can see, uh, we have soft, pho soft phones, uh, hard phones, Polycom, um, C proxy, turn server, you need turn server for net traversal, and the uh, WebRTC actually, uh, well, um, STAN is actually mandatory for WebRTC. And, uh, well, you can see it's, uh, it really enables everything, uh, cross-communication. Okay, the main WebRTC components are uh, media stream. Uh, these are mainly audio, video streams, uh, and the other, like, it's not really restricted just to audio and video. You can also stream from a, a CD or a different kind of sensors. Uh, okay. Uh, RTC peer connection. Uh, this is, this actually handles the codec stuff, codec stuff the security, uh, SRTP and uh, DTLS. Um, also, it's also part of uh, the signaling mechanism. Okay. And the uh, RTC data channel, uh, this is just for uh, arbitrary data streams, a anything uh, other than audio, video. You can use it for uh, multiplayer games or uh, uh, file transfer, peer-to-peer -peer file transfer, and many more. Okay, about signaling. Uh, we need signaling for uh, WebRTC. Uh, you need, if you want to communicate with someone, you have to know their IP, you have to establish a connection, you need a protocol for that. You, sh you also need to, to know the client's audio and video capabilities so they con can communicate. And uh, as I said, uh, WebRTC doesn't have restriction on what protocol you can use. You can use SIP, XMPP, Jabber, or any other stuff, for example, XML, HTTP requests, you can use them. And um, yeah, uh, current Java JavaScript um, SIP libraries, we currently have a JS SIP. It's a very robust and simple client. We'll uh, demo it later. 
uh, CPML5, which has um, which is more than a C library. It has also it's also media breaker. Uh, it has many capabilities, and the uh, Cafe Sip. Uh, this is uh, a project on which one of my commenters work works. I haven't really used it. Okay, for net traversal, Daniel discussed later uh, earlier. Um, uh, the main protocols are Stun, Turn, and uh, well, ICE is a framework that uh, chooses the best way to bypass net and consume less resources. I mean, for example, uh, for Stun, you just need to you just ask the Stun server to tell you your IP address. So it can uh, it know the it knows the addre address at on which it's, it is listening the client, but for certain configurations, for example, if both clients are behind nets and the nets are not well behaved, you need the turn. Uh, so, but turn uses a lot of resources because you need the. Uh, Relay it relays all the information for the third server. So Wise chooses the is the best of both worlds, chooses the best solution. Uh, Daniel presented earlier the a few of the packages available on Debian, the re return server from Reciprocate, Open Third Server, and the RFC five six six seven turn server. Okay. Uh, now, I'm gonna. I want to make a short presentation of my uh, project, the Recon Server, a conversation manager. Okay. So, um, I have a few users registered in Repro. Uh, this one should be the phone, and um, I also have a Lumical client. One zero one five. So basically, we dial in uh, the um, recon server from both phones, for example. And uh, if someone can speak to the phone, so I can. OK, hi. Hello. <laughs> OK, I can hear you. OK, that's bad. <laughs> Uh, maybe we have some problems, but <laughs> <laughs> it worked earlier. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, it may have some problems, but it usually works. And um, yeah, um, I, f I think I'm gonna ask Daniel for uh, to help me a bit to also show the JSCP uh, client. Uh, for the moment, let's, ju let's just test uh, directly. There may be some options uh, that are not supported, so that's why it's not working right. <coughs> okay, one, two, one, one. OK. 
okay i think i'm having some problems okay maybe let me try Um, so here you can see the browser asks for permission before it um, allows the web page to take control of the audio yeah, and video an hardware. Audio, or it's a security feature. I'm using Chrome. Do you have Chromium? Unstable. If you you click allow, Unavail unavailable. Let's just see. Yeah. Okay. I don't think you're registered. Could you try to register again? Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna call you. So who's got their phone on? <laughs> Who's that? Oh, sorry, it's my web browser. See on the projector that the other user can see that the call has been answered. Yeah, can you hear me? <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's coming through my speakers. Um, can yeah. you enable video on your okay. side? Hello? Can you hear me? <laughs> Maybe not. Let's, let's try again with the video. Now you've enabled video. Okay. You've, so you've enabled video and you're going to call me again and we see if the video works. Wait a second. Is there anybody else who has a recent Chrome or Firefox on their computer and would like to try and dial in? in sorry? In stable. Okay. Um, um, so Firefox. No, it would be a later version. Okay, so you're going to call me again. I'm going to answer the call. I have to allow the permissions. Okay, so we have video. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. so I'm going to take this for a walk and just see how far the Wi-Fi goes. <laughs> so for all those people watching remotely, um, yeah, welcome to Vomaku. That's the lake of Neuchâtel behind me. 
Okay. The problem there is the built-in, um, we've got built-in webcam on this laptop, so. Okay, <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll arrange a uh, little upgrade. That's a webcam. Yeah, I'll call you again. If you try again. <laughs> it's going to the wrong webcam. <laughs> See, I don't. I don't think I have an option for that. No, I, I have to change something. WebRTC is still experimental. They may not have a which webcam option <laughs> at this stage. Um, Actually, I think it may work on my laptop. It worked yesterday with a different webcam. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Oh, here we go. I found it. UVC. So I'm going to call you now. Okay. So allowing the webcam. And that's better. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to take this webcam for a tour of uh, Vomaku and Le Camp. So is that any better? Yeah. Now we're going to go to the bar. <laughs> And no. okay, back. No. Wh which way should I go to maintain the signal? The main talk room. But the point would be to seeing it work uh, in your room at this point. Yes. Um, <laughs> do we dare? <laughs> Is it? Does anybody have any, any questions or would anybody else like to try it from their browser? Is Chromium supported too? Yes, Chromium should be supported. I do have a question. Um, you're both running Chrome now? Yes. So I can already do that using proprietary software. So if you up get installed Firefox, would it also work? Or Iceweasel for that matter? Not in stable. But with the new version of Firefox, from backports or unstable, it may be possible. Mm. Not yet. No. Yes, I hear you should work on many other things as well. So for them, I want to see if you're working with something free. Okay. Well, have we got a volunteer who wants? Who's got the free version? Uh, We have a well Chromium. So, so the way to do this is to go to tryit.jsip.net. Okay. Yep. Um, 
We try one, one at a time. So you're going to steal my identity now. Your um, name is 1212. The SIP URI is just, it's like this. With one two zip colon one two one two at and then that domain name. Uh, the password is and the finally the WSURI is um where it says WS dot try it, it delete all of that and copy in the same domain name as the SIP URI. So it yes. And then colon sixty sixty, that's the port. Six no sixty sixty. That's it. Yes. Um, so now you can try dialing I'm gonna hang up. Yeah. And you can try dialing one two double one. You have to allow the the permissions and that's it. Okay. So now I am calling, and the webcam. Ho ho ho! Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? And uh, okay, now it works. Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you more or less. <laughs> yeah, we don't need to worry about this oh, for I that. Hear you fantastically. <laughs> <laughs> and the webcam is working too, I think. Yes. Fine. Yeah. This time it was more luck. <laughs> okay, so this is a completely free solution that no plugin was required. Um, which which browser version are you using? This is Chromium. Just a moment, I tell you exactly. I am um, this is the one in unstable, but if you want the whole number, is twenty eight dot dot uh, zero dot uh, one hundred uh, one thousand five hundred. Dot ninety five. <laughs> <laughs> Debian Jesse Seed two one three five one four. So, th know this what it means. so this was installed from the package. It wasn't yes. a manual download. No, no, okay. no, absolutely. Great. So so anyone with unstable or even someone with stable can potentially take that package from backports and try WebRTC from their website. And um, so Rhonda, do you, you want to have a go as well? I hang down. No, you're okay? Yep. Hang up, sorry. <laughs> um, I'll just give you my account again. So. I have to just close the tab. Yes. Yeah, just close the tab. So, 1212. The SIP URI is on the, in the little box on my screen. Yes, that's your SIP URI. With the SIP prefix. Uh, I don't think we can for password them. is and the WS URI. You just delete it. Um, yeah, the whole thing. WS colon slash slash. Then that host name from the SIP URI. Colon fifty six. Sorry, colon sixty sixty. Uh, sixty, sixty. Yes. Yep. Okay. So. So you can call Catalin with one two double one. Might be related to my script safe settings. I allowed 
mostly everything that popped up, but. Let's try again. So just just try again and enable the JavaScript console and see if we get any clues of why it's blocking the call. Okay. The thing that pops up is whether I want to allow it to use my webcam. It shortly blinks, but then says user denied media. Mm. Uh, his browser yeah, doesn't support If you support enable it. the um, the JavaScript console. Where do I? Ah, there it is. And do you see anything when you try it? Uncaught type error. Object object has no method on ice completed. Which version of Chrome or Chromium? The one in currently in testing, that's 28.0.1595. Okay, so we'll, we'll we might have to get help from JSIP developers. If, if you can, could you cut and paste the error from the JavaScript console? Sure. And we, we'll follow up with them. So okay, yeah. great. Um, yeah, thanks. thanks for trying that out. Um, does anybody else want to have a go? Okay. Has anyone else got questions? Okay. Can we try it with other clients rather than just the WebRTC thing? Or do you want to go on to talk about you know, making my Jitsi work, for example? But maybe that should come later. Emil, what, what, what did you have planned for your talk? Were you going to do a WebRTC with Jitsi later, or do you want to do that now? <laughs> do you dare? So it needs, it won't work with SIP. Um, so, so what I was saying is that currently Jitsi does not support ICE, and um, well, actually, just ICE with SIP. We so all have public IP addresses at DevCon. Doesn't so matter. No Chrome isn't going to establish a connection unless it has ICE. We do support it with XMPP, and there are people that do successful WebRTC to uh, Jitsi interoperability through XMPP. But you would have to have a gateway, uh, and it's only a signaling gateway. It's not. It's not a media gateway, but you'd have to have it. So we it don't have that ready. Right. So, uh, so no, right. I was. Not planning on. I was just planning on mentioning interoperability, but not. No, that's okay. Um, uh, Wookie, any other questions? No. Okay. Um. Um, I don't know much about this uh, technology and how it works, but uh, uh, I wonder uh, if the if the video traffic uh, goes uh, through uh, through the server or is uh, peer to peer. Um, excuse me, I haven't. I didn't hear the question. My question, my my question is if the video traffic uh, uh, has to go through the server or or is peer to peer. I mean, is uh, the, the traffic is directly from your browser to the other browser, or it has to to go through your uh, ex your zip uh, server. Well, uh, you you zip only for signaling, so the. Data RTP streams are browser to browser, except if you use if uh, you need you need you need the turn server in the net reversal, then it will go through the turn server. But otherwise, this browser browser to browser. So even if the if the server is uh, in the other side of the world, if you are communicating with somebody in your own city, uh, it should be uh, fast. Yeah. Okay, thank you. D could you show us some of the JavaScript that's behind JSIP? 
Well, we could start with the HTML. You can probably just view the source in the browser. Oh, okay. So I'm not uh, sure where to. I think I'm just going to view. Yeah, just that's fine. If you bring up, uh, if you press Control U to bring up the full screen source. Okay. And if if we just scroll down, just to show people the size of this telephone in sort in HTML. About that that's all. Two hundred fifty lines. Yes. So that's that's cut and paste. So to add this to a blog or to replace that old web email form on your website, you can go to this tryit.jsip.net and you can cut and paste their HTML and and you're halfway there. So okay. So uh, are you going to package that so I don't have to go and cut and paste it off a web page somewhere, which always is the kind of thing that annoys me? I've already packaged uh, ml 5 which is an alternative one. Um, would someone like to try installing the ml 5 package on a server? Does anyone have a server they can do that with? It, it'll drop a config into your etc Apache directory, and then you'll have a then you'll have a um, slash sipml5 on whatever domain you're running. Presumably it needs to be a Wheezy server. Um, or is it... Right, yeah, my server's not really unstable, oddly enough. <laughs> <laughs> it may be in testing, but... I don't think it's in, um, yeah, it's not in Wheezy. You can, you can get JSSIP just using wget. And copy it, just wget from that URL that's on the projector. Copy it into a directory under var www.jsip and away you go. This tryit.jsip.net, it's updated regularly. Um, and Catalin, could, could you show us the custom.js file? When we started the demo today, um, Catalin was already logged in. Um, when you go to tryit.jsip.net on the internet, it will ask you to fill in all the credentials to log into some SIP server. It can be your own server, or you can use their test server. Um, however, if you want to host your own version and you want it to work for people who are not going to want to log in manually, you can modify this JS file and you can add in all the parameters and then when somebody goes to the URL, it will log in automatically and they just have to click, the or type the number to call and click to call. And you can actually put the number in as well and then it will automatically call some number. So somebody clicking a link in an email will be taken straight into a webcam session. Um, is, it it is it possible to handle multiple calls, multiple calls simultaneously, like uh, Google Hangout, to workplace Google Hangout? To, to have a conference? or Yes, to have a conference. 
Yeah, it is possible. But I think you need to a certain kind of server to do the media stuff. Yes. I, I'm not familiar. Yeah, the um, conferencing is another step. Um, so the conferencing that, that Katan started to demonstrate before um, is not for WebRTC. The recon server will not support WebRTC clients. It will support regular SIP phones. Um, for WebRTC conferencing, the WebRTC browsers have different codecs. Um, so various people have been trying to put solutions together for that. Uh, so it's not far away. We could well have you know, remote participation in, in next year's DevCon um, using this technology. So. Wouldn't it be most simple to just have multiple WebRTC streams between all the participants of the conference call? Or would that not be possible with browsers? Like maybe, maybe they can only have one at a time. Actually, you can have multiple streams, but it would be too slow. I mean, uh, for each user to receive multiple streams from other users, or? Would it? Well, the bandwidth for video is big. Hmm. Are, are you referring to a full mesh conference? Yeah. That would probably be very unscalable because uh, that will require you to send the same streams to all the to everyone yes. in the conference, to send the same streams to everyone else in the conference. Um, now, currently, for example, in Europe, the most popular way of connecting to the internet is arguably ADSL. Uh, and the way ADSLs are generally configured to run is with a relatively limited upstream bandwidth that could mm. probably easily fit one uh, upstream video stream and, uh, and one audio stream as well, but it would be quite insufficient for anything more than that. Right, um, okay. And I uh, wanted to add one more comment to this. Um, the next talk on GT and GT Video Bridge is going to focus more on conferencing and some of the um, uh, WebRTC interoperability aspects. Uh, what are the bandwidth requirements for an audio-only call and for a video call? Mm. Okay, I'll, I'll start with audio. Um, how many minutes have we got? Okay. Um, there are a range of codecs available. Each codec offers a different style of compression. And there's a trade-off between the quality and the level of compression. And the best codecs in terms of compression will generate a bit rate of about 8 kilobits a second, plus the overheads from the TCP IP, which can actually be more than 8 kilobits a second. Um, but certainly, you, you can get an audio session that's using less than 30 kilobits in total. Um, now for a reasonable quality, you'll probably have 80 kilobits or more for audio. Um, and that will get you a G711, and sometimes you can use the G722, which is a wideband codec. Um, a video on top of that really varies. Um, so the more quality and the bigger the resolution and the faster the frame rate, the more it's going to use. So even with a limited bandwidth, like with 100 kilobits, you have a very basic picture, but if you've got megabits to spare, um, then you'll have live sort of movement in your picture. So, but certainly the people with um, the bo bare bones, like 128 kilobit uplink on their DSL in some of the more remote locations, can get two or three concurrent audio calls over their um, broadband connection or one audio and one video stream. So. so I just succeeded in setting this up on my server. He's right, it's not very difficult. Copy the file to somewhere, you can see. Um, doesn't look very pretty. Uh, that's Firefox not running some JavaScript, I suspect. Um, uh, if I try running it in the Epiphany browser, it makes a crash, so it's not very good. Um, but anyway, um, what do I type? Okay, so 
I think what we've demonstrated is we can host it on your server, even if your browser is not WebRTC ready. So the only way we're going to get past this is to upgrade the browser. But nonetheless, other people can call each other through your server now using that um, technology if you give them accounts. Um, <laughs> it's just you won't be able to make or receive calls with them until you update the browser. So. <laughs> but how, how did you feel about the process of getting it onto the server? Like if we connect to your server from one of these laptops, it should work for us. Yeah. We could try that. Okay, if you take your laptop up to Catalin and he can, he could try that. Okay. So if you copy Bookie's URL into your browser. Okay. I think it's supposed to be tilde in front of yeah. Wookie. Although I'm not sure why. Uh, is everything copied? Maybe that's the reason she was asked. I didn't copy that one. Did no. you do a recursive W get or just? I didn't tell him it's just copied. Okay. Try a uh, just try a recursive um, W get to to borrow all the content from try it dot dot net. And then it should be okay. <coughs> Have we got anybody watching remotely um, on IRC who might want to try calling us from a remote location? <coughs> Is anybody monitoring IRC? We have any volunteer? No. So we're now demonstrating that on Wookie's website, and and this is there for anybody connected, anybody watching remotely as well. You can all jump on Wookie's website and try to call us at the same time. Okay. So this is the sign-in form that can be automated by getting out up to the .js file. Yeah. Okay, so we need another volunteer. Um, Brenda, would you like to try and help? Yeah. Would you just copy um, this URL? We'll try first with Rhonda, um, and then we'll come back to your browser. You have any luck? Or? Okay, network issues, never mind. Um, I'll try from my browser again. Emil, can you?
So, Wookie, this is your web server. Um, so how long did it take you to install this to your website? About five minutes. I mean, actually, once I typed the right thing in the right place, about 20 seconds. Okay, well done. So, <laughs> so we're really hoping that, that people will go away and try this. Um, there's an article on my blog about Get, RT get WebRTC Going Fast and that will take you through the steps to do this. Um, so people are more than welcome to come and ask questions on the mailing lists, and we'll try our best to help you out. Um, so, yeah, thanks for, for coming to this, this session, and yeah, feel free to come and ask questions and let us know how you progress with it all.